In this video, I'm going to show you how to create various types of walls using the wall assembly tool versus if you were to do split face and split things up that way. We're going to also use the reveal tool and the wall sweep tool that I have shown you in previous videos. So the way that this works is I'm going to actually go to one of my walls that I already have in my little preview file here. And I'm going to click one of them. And yes, this while this wall has got all of its assemblies together, I'm going to actually change it. I'm going to change it to a generic wall. Generic walls are used just in case you ever have like an existing property where you don't necessarily know what the entire construction of the wall is made out of, but you just put it in to the best of your ability. So I'm going to come over here. I'm, after I said I clicked on one of the walls, I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to the type selector. And I'm going to click, um, and let's just go with a generic 6-inch wall. Now, let's say you also need to add things to this wall, i.e. any type of veneer item, uh, metal panels, siding, different things of that nature. Here's how you do it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, we'll say that there's a stone veneer that is on the bottom of this wall. So I'm going to click on wall or excuse me, I'm going to click on architecture, then I'm going to click on wall. Inside of here, I'm going to just hit cancel real quick on that. I'm going to then go in, I'm going to make a new wall. Now, I can start with any wall that I want. The one type of assembly that I want to use, of course, is the concept that this is essentially just uh, a, a wall that's stuck on another wall. So I'm going to go over here to my type selector. I'm going to go down, and I'm going to use one of these generics, and generic masonry is enough. In here, though, I'm going to then say edit type, and I always duplicate. You never know when you're going to need that original file that was in here that you're working off of, so always duplicate. So right now it's, it's set to generic. I'm going to keep it at generic, and I'm going to write in, I'm going to type in stone veneer. Now that I have that in here, I'm going to then go to the structure itself and I'm going to click edit. Inside of here, inside of here, I'm going to do a preview just so I can see here. So you can see the type of wall that is made up. I'm going to then go to the material itself. So I'm going to click inside of material and I'm going to click open the material library. And this is where I'm going to put it in. So to save some me some time, I'm just going to type in up here in this search bar, I'm going to type in stone and see if I get anything to come up. If I don't get anything to come up, okay, it's now time to create something new. And so I'm going to come down here and I'm going to go uh, create new material. And inside of identity, I need to call it what it is. In this particular case, this is a stone veneer. So once again, I'm going to type in. Of default new menu, I'm going to type in stone veneer. Okay, stone veneer. And then the class that I'm going to put this underneath is actually stone. From here, um, as of right now, we don't necessarily have a stone veneer solid graphic that you can put on your file. You actually, that's something that you'll have to load in. It's not something that comes standard as part of the template inside of Revit. So for right now, just so I can see that something is going on here, I'm going to go to where it says uh, foreground. I'm going to go to where it says pattern and I'm going to click on where it says model and because I want it to be a modeled look, meaning it's doing it based off of scale or excuse me, not based off of scale, it's doing it based off of, <laughs> excuse me, it's true size. In this case, I'm just going to grab this block 8 by 16. I know it's not correct, but we're just trying to do this quickly. And I'm going to tell it OK. Now, now that I've got my surface pattern all together, I'm going to go to appearance and I'm going to once again pull in what I want. I want to actually replace my asset with something else, I'm going to go up here to my asset browser and I'm going to click. 
inside of my asset browser, I'm going to then type in where it says search again. I'm going to type in stone. As you can see, a whole lot of stones come up. You can either do a physical asset or you can do a appearance asset. The physical asset is going to have all the information about the project or product with it. Appearance, not so much. Um, let me go first over here where it says stone. There we go. We've got a little bit more. Um, and then uh, let's see, we'll do one that kind of sticks out, so this, this one's a good one. After I've selected that, I'm going to make sure that it goes into my asset, goes back into my library, as you can see it came on over. I'm going to close my asset browser down, and now I've got the look that I want. So I've got my stone veneer, I've got its texture of what it's supposed to be, I'm going to tell it OK. Inside of here, I'm going to actually change it to the thickness that it's supposed to be. And uh, that's just right here. I'm going to click here. And I will change it to two and a half inches. So now that I've got that in there, I'm going to tell it OK. And OK again. Now, when putting in walls inside of a project, it's always best to do it based off the constraint. A lot of times your base constraint is whatever level that you're putting this wall in at. And a lot of times your top constraint is usually the level above. Now, for this, I'm going to actually do a um, little three-foot wall. So it's going to have a water table above it and then possible siding. So I don't need it to go all the way up. So this, in this one, I'm going to actually go where it says top constraint. I'm going to call it, say, unconnected. And I'm going to change the height to three feet. From here, now that I've got this put in here, I'm going to now draw this in. Now, um, be, I'm going to make sure that I draw this in the proper way. So I'm going to go up to where it says location line, and I'm going to actually change it to, we're going to draw based off of the core face interior because we're going to go clockwise. Then that then means I'm going to move in, zoom in where I can on the space. And I'm going to go in front of the item that the veneer is going in front of. So I'm actually going to do all the way across there. And I'm going to go all the way to the other side. I'm going to make sure it goes all the way across. So I've got my stone veneer. And if I were to look at this in 3D, and I'm going to actually rotate around to that side. You'll see, and it's just on this little guy here, I've got a stone veneer on this wall now. I didn't have to do any split face or anything else like that. It's there. From here, and I also, the other thing I want to definitely make sure I do is put in existing. I'm going to add in my water table that I have. So that's why I'm, I've set up my profiles from previously. So I'm now going to go through to wall. I'm going to click drop down underneath wall and go to wall sweep. This is where I'm going to want to put this sweep in. Right now the sweep is set to just cornice. Um, so um, that means I need to make another one. So I'll say edit type. And then inside of here, right now it's at the cornice. I'm going to once again duplicate it. And I'm going to call this one water table. All right, I'm going to make sure that the profile is set up properly. So I'm going to go down to where it says profiles right now. It says default. I'm going to click the drop down inside of there, and I'm going to grab that one that I created, which was the sill three cast three inches wide. And I'm going to tell it, OK. I want it to not be a vertical one, which, hang on a second here. It's trying to do it as a vertical one. I wanted to do it as a horizontal one. So I'm going to go back here to wall sweep, and then I'm going to make sure I click on horizontal. And once again, I'm going to change it to the water table because that's what I want. If, <coughs> excuse me, I've got this place. If by chance it's not how you want it to look, then you just edit it. That's all you got to do. So, and this one isn't. This one is actually not at the right height. So watch this. It's a very fast and quick way to do this. You're going to go to the modify. So I'm going to use my Align tool, and I'm going to hit the top of this wall here, 
first, and then I'm going to hit the bottom of the table. Notice that it moved up. Now, if you don't like that it's sitting in, you could change its offset. So you click on the wall sweep, and you could go where it says offset from wall. And let's go ahead and let's give it a two inches. And it should have, of course, moved out. Um, After you get it into the desired location that you want it to be in, you can also use your align tool this way as well. Now I use my align tool, and I'm going to hit the face of this wall and then the back of my sweep as well. There we go. It's sitting out just how I want it. Now, let's say you need to add on another material to this. Once again, we're going to do another wall assembly made of just that material. So we're going to go up to wall again. Well, actually, let's get into a plan view. From here, I'm going to click on architecture. I'm going to click on wall. This time, instead of being stone, stone veneer, I'm going to do one with siding. Since I don't have siding, once again, I'm going to go into edit type, and I'm going to duplicate because we may need that generic stone veneer for something else. So once again, I'm going to keep this and say generic siding. And maybe if you need to be a little bit more specific, say siding 6 inch, horizontal. Hit the enter button. I'm then going to go back into the structure itself. And I'm going to go back to where it says material. I'm going to open the material library back up. This time I'm going to type in siding. Hit enter. No options. So once again, I'm going to go down here to create new material. Go into my where's this default new material, go to identity, and once again, this is going to be siding six inch horizontal. It's class it can can depend on what you want it to be. Um, for right now we can make this a miscellaneous. Now we're gonna go once again to the graphics for this material. And this time I could do surface pattern, oops, surface pattern foreground, and I can click, and once again, it's a model pattern, not a drafting pattern, because we want it based off of what it actually is, not the scale. Um, I even have a six inch parallel in here, so I'm going to tell it OK. I'm then going to go next to appearance, and I'm going to that's, go back into the asset browser. So I'll open that back up, and I will call this one. I'm going to do a search for uh, siding. Siding brought up a couple options for me, and I'm going to click on the six. This is underneath the physical assets, so maybe I want to go underneath the appearance library. And as you can see, there's all kinds of different siding pieces out there. So. Let's see. I'm going to just do a regular horizontal six inch, wherever it, there it is, beige. I'm going to add the material, so I'm going to click on the, the replace the asset browser. I'm going to close this. I now have my six inch siding material. So I'm going to tell this OK. And then I'm looking for this structure. Um, I've got my six inch horizontal. I just need to change my thickness, and I'm done with it. We're going to say that this siding is probably about uh, an inch, 0.25. Make sure I don't have too many quotation marks in there. Tell that OK. This Remember, it's one and a quarter inch. I'm going to tell this OK again. This time, I'm going to draw this one in. But instead of me having it sitting at three feet, I'm going to have it actually have it sitting above my water table that I put in. So my top constraint is actually going to change back to level two. My other information, my base constraint, I'm actually going to offset from the base unless you put it in a different level line for that. And that is um, we've got three foot for the stone itself and then the uh, wall sweep is sitting on top. That wall sweep was about two inches, so the base offset will be about 38 inches from there. 
Now, what you what else you want to do is you can actually put this right on top of the other item. So, in other words, we're going to draw this so that it's sitting right on top of the stone one as well. It's based off of the interior face core. And I'm going to draw it along that point there where I've got my little wall. Go and look at it in 3D. And now, there we go. I've got a three-piece wall that I've put in at the, each individual piece is sort of in, uh, excuse me, assembly. And I didn't do it as a foot face. The other good news about this is, is if I need to add in anything special to this view, I can. So like, say, for instance, if we want to put any type of openings showing in this. So I would want to go to, well, let's just throw it in there, pick it out. I'm going to go to where it says openings. I'm going to click on wall. I've got my wall opening. I'm going to declare the wall that I want to put it in. I'm going to put it in this siding wall piece. I'm going to then now draw in the rectangle. It's a little bit different because I'm doing it from the side or doing it in 3D. It's usually a lot easier if you're inside of a 2D element, uh, be it a flat or an elevation, to do this. And then this opening, though, let's say it's a niche or whatever else, it can, it can go to any size that it wants. Now that I've got my opening in here, I can edit its size if I want. Now I've got my opening set. I now can do, I want to add on a reveal. Let's say that this siding actually has, it's a metal panel siding or something like that, and it actually has these places where the two join together. So now I'm going to go back to wall. Click the drop down underneath it and go to reveal this time. This time I'm going to pick the reveal that I want to use. And if I don't have it in here, I need to make one. So I'm going to go over here to edit type. I'm going to say duplicate. And for this particular reveal, I'm going to say wall joint. I'm going to make sure I edit it, tell it what profile it has. And I remember I loaded in a reveal triangle joint. Um, I didn't change any information or names when it comes to the to brick sources or anything like that. But, so it's just going to be reveal triangle joint one brick. And I can go back and take those off later. But I'm going to click OK on this. And I'm going to take that reveal and I'm going to change it to vertical. Go to where it says architecture. I'm going to go to wall and I'm going to go to reveal. And I'm going to put in my little wall joint that I have. And I'm going to hit cancel or hit escape to show it in there. If for some odd reason you feel like it's not cutting all the way, put one of them in. You may have to change the offset from the wall. There we go. Now it's in the wall. Now you can see your wall joint. If you ever need more than one of these, just click on it and copy it over to the other location that you want it to be in. These can go vertical or horizontal. And I'm just going to say copy. And there we go. Now I have two Elevation. So you could do these little split materials without necessarily having to do a split face. And it will still schedule the way they're supposed to schedule because they're made out of the way that they're supposed to be made. If you have any questions, you can subscribe to my channel here um, with any more. And you can watch in for any more information when it comes to tutorials. Uh, and if you have any questions on how to do something else, just please let me know.